So it looks like we took a risk and this is take two. I hope this one is going to go through. I don't know what happened with the first one. But besides, I'm, I'm really excited about the topic that we're going to be talking about today and how, um, you know, if you actually take risks in your business, in your life, you will actually get a whole lot more things done. Um, and also by you knowing what risks to take and how to take them, you would be, it will be really, really extremely helpful and actually stay Checking the odds in your favor. Um, those that are just tuning in, thank you so much. I don't know what happened uh, for some weird reason. There was so much energy with that show, and then he just decided to crush on me. So Scott Keating, thank you so much. TJ Mukushi and Reg, thank you all guys so much for tuning in. And we were still really um, uh, talk S. Sue, thank you so much for coming back. I'm not sure what happened with the first um, episode there, it just disappeared on me. So I was still talking about the time when I went skydiving and, you know, we're looking at 13,000 feet, um, you know, down and that was a risk that we were going to take. First of all, I did not know if we were going to land on, on, um, <laughs> Sue says NBN sucks. It did that before dinner. It just crashed on me. Absolutely. So I, I didn't know if we were going to land on water or on safe ground. All we had between, um, you know, uh, me and gravity, I mean, me and um, the ground was that parachute. And what if there's a hole in that parachute? So there's a lot of things that we do in life, in our business, in our daily, um, you know, existence that entails us to take a risk. You know, waking up in the morning, um, wearing these clothes and driving to work um, is risky in and of itself. But we eat that risk because we already know and we have knowledge that there's no one who's just going to cross our, our path or the, the car that we're driving in is safe and all the wheels are tucked in perfectly, you know. But then it so happens within our businesses that we don't grow. We keep taking baby steps and we don't expand, we don't get, um, you know, the, 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 the notoriety we want, we don't get the, the um, uh, what do you call it, the financial um, rebates that we're always after because we're afraid to look bigger than we are or we're afraid to grow or expand our business or to expand our offers to people that we can actually help. Now today, I mean yesterday, we were talking about comfort zones and then somebody was telling me after that that, you know, they had a fear of success and um, they have a fear of actually growing. And I thought it's, it's to do with risk and how risk is sold to us. You know what I mean? And I feel like there's nothing more rewarding than actually reaping the rewards of a, or the benefits of risk gone right. Everything that we look at, every experiment that is out there on the market, somebody took a risk. Somebody took a risk in creating, um, you know, this phone that you're watching this video from. Somebody took a risk in designing the chair you're sitting on. Somebody took a risk, you know, and somebody gave them a chance. And, 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 and now it's become a thing. So can you imagine how many things are or ideas that you have that you're not risking to put out and how many ideas that a lot more other people are not putting out because they're afraid of taking the risk of building um you know that small thing that they can actually um make into uh, something big so i'm understanding the people The people that are watching this video right now are entrepreneurs. And for entrepreneurs, taking a risk is the necessity of the job. You don't know who your customer is going to be. You don't know how they're going to react to you reaching out to them. You don't know what the economy is going to be like tomorrow. You don't know anything. All right. So it's all about taking a risk. Why then just take a smaller risks and instead of actually going all the way? It's because... Like I said yesterday, a lot of us are afraid of coming out of our comfort zone. But, you know, after all, you, we're never quite, um, you know, positive that things are going to work the way that we envision. But we make these choices anyway. And the more we then win at these risks, it will affect our business, affect the relationships that we have. And, um, you know, we never absolutely are sure if, whether we're making the right risk or not. So just do it anyway. So tell me something. 
here um, in the comments there. What risk did you take at least in the last year that has actually become something um, you know that your business is based on? Did you take any risks at all last year? Can you just type in the comments there so that I can understand if you guys um, you know actually do um, take risks or are you just playing it safe? Because if you're playing it safe, then there's no need for you to continuously watch this video. I want to talk to those people that are willing to grow, willing to take risks along the way in order for them to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Because like I was saying earlier on, when you know what risks to take and how to take them, it can be extremely helpful in actually staking the odds against your favor. Because right now you don't know if you write an email, um, what response you're going to get from your client. You don't know if you put an advertising campaign out there, what response you're going to get from the market. All of those are risks, you know, but some people decide which risks to take and which risks not to take. Now, Robert says, leaving my company with a 49% reduction on my pension. That's a big risk. Um, there wasn't enough to cover the expenses for two people. All right. But then it's a risk that has paid off. Look at the relationships that you've created. Um, and I think um, your partner got a job in the recent days, didn't she? So it's all working together, you know. Um, and, and you knew it was time for you to actually take, you know, that risk. Um, you know, um, and I'm not also saying as a disclaimer that, you know, you should continuously just take risks that are not calculated. All right. So I'm going to be telling you and, 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 you know, working with you and showing you exactly, um, when to know how to take risks, etc. Now, Sue says, um, made my entire online strategy available online for free. Whoa, that's a bit risky. But let me tell you something about that. And if you look at the results that you're getting now, because people are coming to the internet to get information, Sue. So if you're providing that information, they get to know, like, and trust you. And they know that you're the person that is able to provide that information. The one thing a lot of people don't want to do is take the risk of taking the action so that they don't have anyone else to blame. So that's why they will hire you. So it wasn't risky. It was a calculated move. If you ask me, <laughs> you know what I mean? I actually think you were smart by doing that, Sue. And Raj says, being an entrepreneur, I took a lot of financial risks last year and they are paying off. That's a really good, um, that's a really good comeback. Because without risk, you don't grow. Without, you know, taking yourself out into the abyss there, you won't see the potential of what you could have been. Because the more you take yourself out of the comfort zone, the more you, you get to be a bigger person um, than you are. And you grow into that, you know. So all the risks that you take, whether it's, you know, quitting your job or you're taking on clients that you don't know how to serve, all of those are risks. You know, but some people try and avoid them. Some people are like a turtle. They move around with their shell. And then the moment something hard comes up, you know, they, they, they retreat into their shell. You're not growing. You can't keep taking baby steps for the rest of your business life. Do you know what I mean? I mean, while some risks are, you know, are unavoidable, you know, approaching them strategically can actually be the best way to de de decrease their intensity. And guess what? We all live to learn and you learn from making mistakes. Can you imagine if everything was perfect? Can you imagine if everything was going according to plan? You know, how boring would life be? How boring would life be if there was nothing that was news? And Paul says every master was once a disaster. Absolutely. Because you got to learn and become the person and grow into the person that can handle whatever, um, you know, uh, predicament you, you, you're going to be facing. Because if you're just put in, 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 in front of handling clients without having risked before, it will be difficult for you to actually objection handle or to actually know what to say, how to say it, and actually convince those clients to come, um, you know, and work with you. So... You know, since I was talking about, um, you know, comfort zones yesterday, I just thought today would be good to talk about honing your risk taking skills and, you know, put out some guidelines out there so that people just don't go and plunge themselves, um, you know, into into the abyss and not really know what to do when they're there. You know, one thing that 
makes everybody take a risk every single day is because they are informed. You know, I was talking about earlier that if you know that there are rules on the road, if you know that your car is safe, your brakes are in place, that information is important for you not to worry when you're driving. And you can drive absent-mindedly because you know nobody's going to just come and, and hit you or nobody's just going to come and go into your lane because there are rules about crossing into other people's lanes. So when you are an entrepreneur, information is your friend. All right? You have to, the, the, the more knowledge you have about a given topic, the less, the less risky it is for you to, to take on those endeavors. Hey, Julia Gusha, how are you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day right there. So the more you know about something, the, the easier it is for you to, to tackle it. Like right now, how many times, you remember the first time you started driving? Were you not afraid? Were you not afraid? Oh my God, I don't know what gear to, to, to press. I don't know what gear to put in or I don't know how to steer or you couldn't put the indicator and drive at the same time. All of those things. But right now, because you've got that knowledge, you've got that information of what you're supposed to do and how to do it. You just jump into a car without even thinking, drive out of your driveway and off you go. So the more knowledge you have about a topic, the, the less risky your endeavors will ultimately be because you already have the knowledge you know have you ever seen those people that are on wall street they just go in they look at the figures they look at the graphs because they already know what happened in history they know what to predict it's easy for them to put in billions and billions of people's money on there can you imagine you just going on there today and you don't even understand, you know, how, how the matrix works and then you just go in with an uninformed bet, you know? So if you're going into something, become an expert in that industry, become known and participate in groups, inform yourself as much as you can. We all know about the story of uh, Roger Bannister, the guy who did the four, first four minute mile. Before he could run, people didn't know it was possible to run a mile um, in four minutes. But after Roger Bannister did it, it became knowledge. People became aware that it is possible. So seek out knowledge and whatever you're going to be doing, it's no longer going to be a risk. It's actually going to be something that has been tried and proven by somebody else. Because remember, whatever you're trying to do right now, whatever you're trying to achieve has been achieved, has been written about or has been recorded on video about by somebody prior to you who knows a thing or two about what they're doing. You know? So like I'm saying, try and, I'm not saying be an expert or be a guru, but try and know at least a thing or two than the next person behind you. You should know your industry so well and you actually have to have so much product knowledge that whatever risk you're going to be, um, you know, you're taking, it no longer is a risk. It's actually a strategy or a tactic that you will be taking on in order for you to achieve your goals. You know, because once you understand the buying patterns of your customers, you know, what their motivation is, what their pain point is, and what actually drives them to buy your products, and when they're actually ready to buy, how would you not know when it's the right time to actually go and sell something or a product or a service to somebody when you have that knowledge? So most of these things that we think are risky or we're afraid to do is because we're not educating ourselves on that subject matter enough so as an entrepreneur in any profession or whatever niche you're going to be in it requires to take risks but they no longer become risks they become lessons if you have the knowledge to tackle that thing you know you want to have as much information about that subject as possible and the more you know i guarantee you the fewer unknowns that are going to be there and the fewer the unknowns, ultimately, you start taking action and it's no longer a risk. Like I said yesterday, excuses sound best to the person who's actually saying them. The more you are not taking um, you know, action and the more you, you, you put out excuses as if something is risky, whoever you're talking to or whoever knows a little bit more knows you haven't done your homework in trying to research on that particular topic. You know? So the more you know, the more you would now actually know, you know fire is good to cook, 
but you know it's 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 dangerous if you touch it so that knowledge you will then be able to assess your risks carefully you know you know the knowledge of what fire is 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 capable of doing for you but you know not to touch it all right so the more knowledge you have about a subject matter the more it's easy for you to take action so figure out how much or what have you read or what have you consumed lately that brings you closer to actually getting your goals because I mean, risk is the reality of life. But like I keep saying, everything you're about to embark on has been done, has been proven, has been written about by somebody who is not even as knowledgeable as you are. Like what Steve Jobs said, everything in life has been created by somebody not smarter than you. But you still think it's a risk to go on and, and actually do things that will help your family, help you reach your goals and help you actually be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So once you know, you know, the knowledge of what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, you are now, you know, taking informed decisions and, and, and making strong assessments and actually finding out, is this the right thing for me to be doing? Because if you're still doing what you were doing in 2017, right about now, then you're probably wasting a whole lot of time, money and effort. Or if you keep doing the same thing, what did they say? If you keep doing the same thing, it's called insanity. So, you know... Having that knowledge, having that information and being able to look at a risky situation and actually decide whether or not it's not working is the hallmark of being a, a good business person. Because with knowledge, you can do your due diligence. And that's why venture capitalists can actually just look at a business, um, you know, on Shark Tank for 30 minutes and they can actually put in thousands or millions of dollars because they know exactly if this person is a risk taker or not, that's all they're looking for in a person. Because if you're mincing and answering and whatever, they don't want to know what you're doing. They want to know, are you going to be there for the long haul? Are you a risk taker? Because they're taking a risk with their moolah. You know, they're not just going to throw their money rest recklessly at somebody who's not certain, somebody who's not risk averse. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's just one of those things. Being a really good risk taker is going outside your comfort zone, not always taking baby steps and actually using information that you have access to because we've got all this information. Google, books, blogs, all of us are bloated with information, but we're not taking action because we are maybe what? Afraid of taking risks. But just look around at the people that have already achieved what you want to achieve. And maybe, what is the reason for your, your fear? Are you afraid of failure or are you afraid of success? Can you type in the comments there? The reason I'm not taking action, is it failure or is it success? Can you please type in there so that I have an understanding? Because there's people that are afraid of failure, which is legitimate. There's people that are genuinely afraid of success, which is also legitimate. And Paul says, thoughts without action are just thoughts. Absolutely, man. Because at the end of the day, look at this. Failure is what brought you where you are right now. Imagine, first of all, the millions and millions of other sperm that didn't make it for you to be there. So if they made it, if they didn't fail, then you wouldn't be there. So appreciate that all risks are learning experiences. You know, because without learning, without any risk being taken on your part or in anybody else, it's understandable. Scott, afraid of success. Some people really are genuinely afraid of, am I going to be able to handle this? But I think if you actually inform yourself on what to do when you get to that level, it becomes easy. You know? I mean, on, on some accounts, you know? So, I mean, if, 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 if success is a genuine um, fear, find out are there people that have done what you want to do, what are they doing, and, and who do they hang out with, and just try and be around that energy. Some people are afraid of failure. 
you know, while failures may not actually lead to an increase in your bottom line, you know, half of the time they give us an opportunity to actually get information first about who we are, what we've done wrong, what the misstep was, and how we can move forward with it, um, you know, in the future. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks, Luke, man. You know, because at the end of the day, I, everybody else is just playing small, really. There's no point in us hanging out together and not moving each other every single day. Guess what, guys? You're an average of the five people that you hang around with. All right. I also want that if you're the five, fifth person that I hang around with, at least you're moving me. We're moving in some direction forward together and taking risks and, and, and talking about it and laughing about it and growing. And Scott says, for years, I didn't feel like I deserve success, but now I know I deserve it. Well, let me tell you something, Scott. Everybody else is, deserves success. And if you're going to be helping other people, how are you going to be able to do that when you're poor? You know, how are you going to be able to do that when, 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 when it's not working for you? You know, the biggest mistake many people see is seeing failure as a measure of who they are rather than the measure of what's possible with them. You know, we've, we've always heard about failure is actually feedback. Success is feedback. Because the more you get, then, you know, you are always at a bottom level to other people that are at a different level to you. You know? Do you know what I mean? So failure and success, both of those are feedback. It's what you do with that feedback that then determines how are you moving forward. Because I know a lot of uh, successful entrepreneurs, they failed first before they even created a multi-million dollar offering. They went on and started doing a whole lot of other things and then eventually they got something. Most overnight successes, they take years and years and years to make. So if you're afraid of success, then you're actually crippling yourself from reaching your goals. You know why? Because can you imagine how many other things you're, 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 subconsciously, um, you're subconsciously stopping yourself from doing just because you're afraid you would succeed? How many things are you stopping yourself from going to? How many people are you stopping yourself from ringing? Because, oh, what if, what if they pick up the call and what if they say yes? What am I going to do after that? You know, so if you take a risk and you succeed or you take a risk and you fail, you learn from it. Ask yourself, what can I do differently next time? And then you move on because, you know, the only failure is not learning from the lesson that you've been provided and using it to hone, you know, your next endeavor. Because if you're afraid of success, then maybe you're just thinking too small. Because what you think is, oh my God, the, the, the highest possible that you can earn is probably where some other people start. I think it was Mark Zuckerberg that was saying the biggest risk is not actually taking any risk at all. You know, in, in a world that is constantly changing like this, everything is, is happening so fast. You have to literally run to stand still. The only strategy that is guaranteed you know, to fail is actually not take any risk at all and stay stagnant. Because taking the risk is the only way that you will go from where you are to where you really want to, um, you know, get to. If you're afraid of failure or if you're afraid of, 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 of success, which is all legitimate failures, the risks will move you closer to your goals. You know, and there's always an opportunity to turn that success into more success. Because what you might think is the epitome of what is possible for you, you know, the universe would just be like, oh, we're only just getting started. We're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute. So the more you are not doing or taking any risks in order to grow yourself, to be better, do better, feel better, you are taking away the opportunity that the world had to be saved because you existed. We're here to get results, guys. So the more you're not contributing, the more you're not putting out results there, you're just wasting other people's time, your time, and everything else that is possible for you. 
you know i really hope um this series of videos has been um you know useful and then tomorrow is friday obviously um as usual is the ask and prosper show that show is an hour long where you get to ask me questions so you might have questions from the videos that we were doing throughout the whole week or you might have questions regarding how to make your business profitable and enjoyable let me know um and then i, I will put up a, a status a little bit later on so that you can you know start um asking the questions and then i will answer them live for you um you know so that you too can be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and don't forget if you haven't claimed your profile on the australian business um online directory be sure to do so we're growing maybe by the time you come around you're going to be missing out on the opportunity yes like i keep saying take a risk check it out see what you're missing out on and if it's something that doesn't work for you good for you but i don't think that's what other people that are on there already um are saying so thank you so much um you know for your time sorry about the glitch earlier on i don't know what's happening with my internet but i really hope the message came through today because you can't keep taking baby steps do you know what i mean you can't keep taking baby steps failing i mean falling just short of your ambitious goals um will not grow your business you know it won't grow your business at all and especially just taking baby steps and playing too small and being mediocre people can see it all right so stop playing small in the meantime enjoy the rest of your day and thank you so much for your patience